it, it's important that Neuralink solve this problem sooner rather than later, because the point at which we have digital superintelligence, that's when we pass the singularity and, and things become just very uncertain. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad or good, but the point at which we pass singularity, things become extremely unstable. So we want to have a human brain interface before the singularity, or at least not long after it, to minimize existential risk for humanity and consciousness as we know it. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we are going off the deep end and exploring what I believe is Elon Musk's most important company. Yeah, most important company. SpaceX, eh, Tesla, eh, OpenAI, eh, boring company, eh, Neuralink is where it's at. So let's see what Elon had to say. And by the way, guys, in a couple of weeks time, Neuralink is going to provide an update on their progress. So this is going to be a great way to see where were they about a year ago and where are they today? Let's dive in. Hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you get two free stocks, one of them valued up to $1,400. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. People in the AI community refer to the advent of digital superintelligence as a singularity. That That is not to say that it is good or bad, but it, that it is very difficult to predict. Uh, what will happen after that point, and and that there's some probability it will be bad, some probability it'll be it will be good. We obviously want to affect that probability and have it be more good than bad. I know some of you will be familiar with the term the singularity, and others won't. So let me explain. The analogy comes from the idea of a singularity in space-time, a black hole where gravitational forces are so strong that it literally bends space-time back in on itself, and no information can get out, no light can get out, nothing. Okay, that's why it's called a black hole. And the analogy applies to artificial superintelligence in a similar way. Beyond a certain point in the future, when AI is self-improving in this recursive feedback loop at such a staggering rate exponentially, we simply do not know what things will look like, and there is a high probability or at least a non-zero probability that the incentives, the goals, the values that this artificial superintelligence has may not necessarily align with the well-being of us. I consider myself a very optimistic person, but I'm also quite rational. And in that sense, I do lose a lot of sleep worrying about what happens if artificial superintelligence does get away from us, so to speak. Let me illustrate this point. I know a few of you are like, yeah, I totally get it. And others are like, come on, dude, what are you talking about, man? AIs, what, what do you think Terminator is going to happen? This is a great thought experiment proposed by Nick Bostrom. Suppose we have an AI whose only goal is to make as many paper clips as possible. The AI will realize quickly that it would be much better if there were no humans because humans might decide to switch it off. Because if humans do so, there would be fewer paper clips. Also, human bodies contain a lot of atoms that could be made into paper clips. The future that that AI would be trying to gear towards would be one in which there were a lot of paper clips and no humans. And that thought experiment isn't implying that's what would take place. It's just giving us a taste of what we can infer could go wrong in the future with artificial superintelligence. There's unlimited things that could go wrong. And it only takes one to be an existential threat to humanity. I know this sounds a little bit alarmist to some people and others are on board. I used to think that everything will be fine. No worries. I looked into it. I do genuinely lose sleep over this. Do you also hope that the work at Neuralink will help us understand more about our about the human mind, about the brain? Yeah, I think the work in Neuralink will definitely shed a lot of insight into how the brain and the mind works. Right now, just the, the data we have regarding how the brain works is, is very limited. You know, we've got fMRI, which is, that that's kind of like putting a, you know, a stethoscope on the outside of a factory wall and, and then putting it like all over the factory wall and you can sort of hear the sounds, but you don't know what the machines are doing, really. Are you? It's hard. You can infer a few things, but it's very broad brushstroke. What a brilliant analogy. In order to really know what's going on in the brain, you really need, you have to have high precision sensors. And then you want to have stimulus and response. Like if, if you trigger a neuron, what, how, how do you feel? What do you see? How does it change your perception of the world? You're speaking to physically just getting close to the brain, being able to measure signals from the brain yeah. will give us sort of oh, open the door in, in, in inside the factory. Yes, exactly. Being able to have high precision sensors that, that tell you what individual neurons are doing, and then being able to trigger a neuron and see what the response is in the brain. So you can see the consequences of, of, of a, if you fire this neuron, what happens? How do you feel? What does it change? It, it's, it'll be really profound to have this in people because people can articulate uh, their change. Like if, if there's a change in mood or if, if they've if, you know, if they can tell you if, if they can see better or hear better or be able to form sentences 
better or worse, or you know, their memories are jogged or that, you know, that kind of thing. The potential here is absolutely insane. Like, think about this. Imagine you've got a Neuralink implant, they're doing some testing, trying to work on curing disease, etc. Just imagine, press a button on your Neuralink thing. Oh, my pain went away. Oh, I don't feel nauseous anymore. Oh, I can see in color again. Oh, my leg's able to move. Oh, I don't have this feeling that I'm going to die. Oh, I'm not panicking anymore. Oh, my anxiety went away. Oh, I can hear clearly. Oh, I'm not hearing voices in my... I could literally just keep going on and on and on and on and on. The potential here, I know it's going to be a little bit hit and miss at first, but just imagine being able to get real-time feedback from a person with a Neuralink implant to actually tell you what's happening, what's occurring, what's changing. This is going to be a revolution in medicine and science. Ultimately, like we, we currently operate on two layers. We have sort of a limbic, like prime primitive brain layer which is where all of our kind of impulses are coming from it's sort of like we've got we've got like a monkey brain with a computer stuck on it that's that's the human brain <laughs> and a lot of our impulses and everything are driven by the monkey brain and the the computer the cortex uh, is constantly trying to make the mon monkey brain happy it's not the cortex that's steering the monkey brain it's the monkey brain steering the cortex you know so, but the cortex is the part that tells the story of the whole thing so we convince ourselves it's it's uh, more interesting than just the monkey brain the cortex is like what we call like human intelligence. You know, so it's like the, that's like the advanced computer relative to other creatures. Uh, other, other creatures do not have really they don't they don't have the computer, or they have a very weak computer relative to humans. But but it's this, it's like it, it sort of seems like sh surely the really smart thing should control the dumb thing, but actually the dumb thing controls the smart thing. <laughs> so we can think of Neuralink, at least in its final form, as a third layer to the human brain, which will massively enhance and expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I mean, we're a neural net. AI is basically a neural net. So it's like digital neural net will interface with biological neural net and hopefully bring us along for the ride. You know? But the vast majority of our, of, of our, of our intelligence will be digital. This is, like, like, so like, think of like, the, the difference in intelligence between your the cortex and your limbic system is gigantic your, your, your limbic system really has no comprehension of what the hell the cortex is doing you know it's just literally hungry you know or tired or angry or sexy or something you know that's and, and just and, and then it, that communicates that that impulse to the cortex and tells the cortex to go satisfy that <laughs> so then a lot of a great deal of like a, a massive amount of thinking like truly stupendous amount of thinking has gone into sex okay. without purpose, without procreation, without procreation, which is actually quite a silly action in the absence of procreation. It's, it's a bit silly. Well, so why are you doing it? Because it makes the limbic system happy. That's why. That's why. What is the most exciting or some of the most exciting things that you see in the future impact of Neuralink, both on the science, the engineering, and societal broad impact? So Neuralink, I think, at first, we'll solve a lot of brain-related diseases. It could be anything from like autism, schizophrenia, memory loss. Like everyone experiences mem memory loss at, at certain points in, in age. Parents can't remember their, their kids' names and that kind of thing. So th there's, I think, a tremendous amount of good that uh, Neuralink can do in solving critical damage to the brain or the spinal cord. There's a lot that can be done to improve quality of life of individuals. And that will be, those will be steps along the way. And then ultimately, it's intended to address the or the risk, the existential risk associated with uh, digital superintelligence. Like we will not be able to be smarter than a, a, a digital supercomputer. Um, so therefore, if you cannot beat them, join them. And at least we won't have that option. You, you have hope that Neuralink will be able to be a kind of um, connection to allow us to to merge, to ride the wave of the improving uh, AI systems. I think the chance is above 0%. So it's non-zero. Yes. There's a chance. You know, it went from maybe one in a million to improving. Maybe it'll be one in a thousand, and then one in a hundred, then one in ten. It depends on the rate of improvement of Neuralink and how fast we're able to do make progress, you know. This is why Neuralink, to me, is by far the most exciting of Elon Musk's companies. This is the ultimate end goal. This is what he's aiming for. Now, yes, it'll be difficult. So was Tesla. So was space. I could keep going on. You get the point, right? Not going to be easy. But if Elon can pull this one off, holy shit, curing all kinds of diseases, ending huge amounts of suffering for millions, if not billions of people, the potential here truly staggering, and then augmenting human intelligence, expanding the scope and scale of consciousness itself. What the actual f I think it's like fundamentally good, you know, you know, giving somebody back full motor control after they've had a spinal cord injury, you know, restoring brain functionality after a stroke, 
solving debilitating genetically oriented brain diseases. These are all incredibly great, I think. And in order to do these, you have to be able to interface with the neurons at a detailed level and you need to be able to fire the right neurons, read the right neurons, and and then effectively you can create a, a circuit, replace what's broken with, with silicon and essentially fill in the, the missing functionality. And then over time, we can have we develop a tertiary layer. So if like the limbic system is the primary layer, then the cortex is like a sec- the second layer. Um, and as I said, the, you know, obviously the cortex is vastly more intelligent than the limbic system. But people generally like the fact that they have a limbic system and a cortex. I haven't met anyone who wants to delete either one of them. They're like, okay, I'll keep them both. That's cool. The limbic uh, system's kind of fun. Yeah, that's where the fun is. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then you, you, people generally don't want to uh, lose the cortex either. Right, so they like having the cortex and the limbic system. Yeah. Uh, and and then there's a tertiary layer, which will be digital superintelligence. And I, I think there's room for optimism, given that the cortex, the, 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 the cortex is very intelligent and the limbic system is not, and yet they work together well. Perhaps there can be a tertiary layer where digital superintelligence lies, and that that will be vastly more intelligent than the cortex, but still coexist peacefully and in a benign manner with the cortex and limbic system. I, for one, am very excited about the future, providing AI doesn't get away from us anyway. Now, let me know in the comments below, guys. Are these new concepts for you? Have you heard of this singularity? Do you think this is a realistic scenario in the future that we will merge with AI? Do you think it's completely ridiculous? Will you be an early adopter of Neuralink, or are you staying the f*** away from artificial intelligence getting anywhere near your brain? And I know a lot of my subscribers are stock investors, so let me know. If Neuralink ever went public in the future, would you be interested in investing in Neuralink stock? And just to bring things full circle, some final parting words from Elon Musk. It's important that Neuralink solve this problem sooner rather than later, because the point at which we have digital superintelligence, that's when we pass the singularity and, and things become just very uncertain. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad or good, but the point at which we pass singularity, things become extremely unstable. So we want to have a human brain interface before the singularity, or at least not long after it, to minimize existential risk for humanity and consciousness as we know it. And for those who want to go a little bit further on the topics discussed in this video, artificial superintelligence and the singularity, I've got two book recommendations for you. I read both of these years ago and they both blew my mind completely to smithereens. The first, The Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil. Absolutely mind-blowing look at where things are headed in terms of the exponential growth of technology and where that leads. And the second is Superintelligence by Nick Bostrom. Warning, you may not sleep too well after you read that book. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And of course, don't forget your free stocks with Webull. If you're in the US, you can start a new account with Webull using my link below. Deposit $100, you'll get two free stocks, one of them valued up to $1,400. And if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or the UK, you can get a free stock using the link in the description to stake. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again